welcome to the Idiot's Guide to Writing Smart Characters. Now, in most stories, you're going to want a character that is smart, but you may be wondering how to do that because you're kind of stupid. So that's what this video is for, how you can write characters that are smarter than you are, because, you know, often you want a genius character that can solve all your problems, but you're like, I'm not a genius, how am I supposed to write this? That's what today is for, and it's based on the principle that the average person okay so you you know your average joe assumes that they are smart i'm just writing stuff down so, you know so you can take notes and i thought this would be cool to structure it like a lesson and have that school theme because you know you go to small to school to get smart that they are smart so what does this mean basically to write a smart character, you just have to be slightly smarter than it. they. They just have to be smarter. Wow. Okay. As you can see, there's a reason why this is the idiot's guide to writing um, smart characters. The average person assumes that they are smart. So if a character is slightly smarter than they are, they're going to assume that character is like super duper smart. So. I've, ha I've found this in real life where you don't have to know a lot about a topic for people to assume that you're super knowledgeable about it because they assume that they know lots of stuff and so if they see you know slightly more than they do they're like whoa you're some sort of super genius now this does also help that if you're articulate um which just means that you're good at explaining what you're talking about so the way that your characters talk if they struggle to explain themselves, it may make them seem less intelligent because people assume that good speakers are smart, which isn't always the case. This is how like you get so like I'm trying to think of an example of uh, the noises my cat of a person like say I don't want to get too political with this, but like someone like Ben Shapiro speaks the way he does to sound smart. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Ben Shapiro, don't look him up. Um, basically, he's just a dude that um, says some different things, but, you know, gets following from, you know, sounding intelligent. Same with someone like Jordan Peterson, who uses, like, academic rhetoric to make himself sound intelligent. Which, I mean, I also do this. I, you know, I'm pretty good at public speaking, which helps me to sound smarter than I am. Now, some other traits you can give your characters. Glasses. Now, I don't know why glasses are in associated with intelligence, because I do not wear these bad boys to look smart. I wear them because I cannot even read this writing whilst I'm hovering and holding them. But across both, like, Western and, like, Japanese media, glasses are for intelligent characters. You've got... Like, Ida from My Hero Academia wears his glasses to look smart. Uh, you've also got that classic, like, thing where they get the hand and they're like, for Ching. Uh, you've got Togami from um, Danganronpa. I'm trying to, th I can't believe I'm, like, spacing on intelligent characters that wear glasses. Uh, but that's a common trait you can give them. Also, we tend to value book smarts. So you, if your character reads a lot, we're like, yes, smart person, even though that's not necessarily true because, hey, you could be reading the same books all over again. Like, I read a lot of books and I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily smart because of it. But book reading is something we associate with intelligence because, you know, you learn stuff from books. Even though really today, I feel like it would be more efficient to, you know, be on your computer researching. But, you know, if your character's just out sitting in the the playground reading that book because come on like everything's said in high school and we'll be like whoa they're so smart but also talking about book intelligence there's certain types of intelligence that are more valued than others so you probably want your character to be really good at stem subjects which stands for science technology engineering and maths so your things that were popular during the enlightenment period there's a reason why in the big bang theory they're physicists because we value science whereas say a character like Elle Woods now if you're unfamiliar with who Elle Woods is she's the protagonist of Legally Blonde Elle Woods is a smart character from the beginning but she's good at fashion which unless your story centers around fashion 
like I'm thinking of something like Cruella, that that movie. We see the Baroness and um, the character Cruella as intelligent because they're good at fashion. But in most situations, fashion is seen as a feminine subject, not really that value compared to something like physics or compared to law. So we as the audience and the characters around Elle see her as more intelligent because she's good at law by the end of the film, which technically she is smarter because, you know, she's got both sets of knowledge. But we don't particularly value her fashion and you know, makeup knowledge, even though, if spoiler alert for the film, that's what ends up getting her to win the case. Um, also another factor, I, I feel like Elle Woods is a good example because she's an intelligent character that is not perceived as intelligent, which gives us, um, enlightens us to what kind of things we value and perceive as intelligent. So, another reason why Elle Woods is not seen as particularly smart is because she's viewed as being too happy. Now, you're probably like, what? So we associate happiness with, you know, being naive, which we view as not intelligent. We, we tend to look at cynicism and being cynical as seeing that as somehow edgy and smart because, you know, we're like, Oh yeah, they're so deep and hurt and stuff. And so we tend to not look at optimistic characters as very intelligent. I'm not entirely sure why this is because I wouldn't like necessarily think that, you know, being doomy and gloomy necessarily makes you smarter than someone who's optimistic. But generally we tend to look at cynicism as being more intelligent. Um I'm not here to explain why these things are, these are just observations I've found to help you just utilize what already exists to try and make your characters look smart, or intentionally work against it perhaps to write a smart character, but the audience doesn't pick up on how smart they are, maybe to have them, you know, flip at the end. So another thing is we usually don't value, value cowardice, so we don't want them to appear cowardly, but if they're strategic, you know, so the, if for example a character was to leave a battle early, like betray their comrades, if it was done seeing like where they're scared and stuff, we wouldn't view them as intelligent, we'd view them as a coward, and we don't like cowardice. We view tell intelligence as a good thing, so, but if it's a strategic maneuver, if it's come across that, you know, they're not doing it because they're afraid, they're just being big brain and stuff, then we would see them as smart. So, for example, I feel like two ca a character that might exemplify this is Peter Pettigrew from um, Harry Potter, um, as compared to the likes of Snape from Harry Potter. They're both, you know, traitors, but one seen as a coward, so not seen as particularly smart. There's other factors, but then, you know, Snape's seen as, oh yeah, spoilers for Harry Potter, but like, it's old and I I'm not sure how many people are trying to read it now, <laughs> but yeah. Um, not super big spoilers and stuff, but because I guess they're kind of portrayed that way from the start when you meet their characters. So yeah, there's, um, now I've lost my train of thought, but yeah, okay. Another thing is emotions, which links into this idea of cowardice and stuff. See, we value intelligence, we look at intelligence, so being smart as relating to logic, which is the seen as like antithetical and opposite of emotions and stuff. So if a character makes a decision based on emotions, it's not going to be seen as an intelligent decision. Hence why cowardice is not seen as smart, but you know, strategic is because logic. And it's logical, you know, they're making a decision based in reason rather than emotions, like if you're just doing it because you're scared. But if they're going to do it because of emotions, it needs to be a sort of cynical worldview. So, like, a character like Lelouch from Code Geass is technically, like, emotionally driven. They want revenge. But that's a cynical sort of scene as a... a dark emotion. Same as someone like Karapika from Hunter x Hunter. You know, they also want revenge and stuff. Uh, so often, like, if it's an emotionally driven thing, but if someone's trying to, you know, they believe in the good of people, it's generally not seen as an intelligent, strategic, cunning maneuver. Cunning's another thing. Um, cause, but I mean, what you're going to do will vary slightly depending on what role your character has. 
So if you've got like an antagonist, you might make them a bit more emotionally driven, but they're going to, you know, lean into the, the idea of madness, you know, the crazy scientist, you know, we, where it's like they're just that smart, you know, twisted and gone beyond our understanding. But still, like, in that, their emotions aren't positive things. Generally, I haven't seen a lot of super smart characters that, you know, are viewed as super smart, but are particularly positive. Which, um, I'm not sure how rooted in reality that is. But that's another, that's probably a discussion for someone smarter than me. Because remember, we're just here to write characters, not analyze the nature of how society, you know, views intelligence and stuff. I mean, if you understand that, that could help you write smart characters, but at that point, are you an idiot? Like, if you understand the nature of intelligence and why it is the way it is, then you're probably a big brain. Now, another thing is sports. Um, because we sort of have this idea of, like, nerd versus jock, which is just brains. I'm going to have to rub some stuff out soon. <laughs> Brains versus brawn. Generally, being athletic and stuff is seen as like, unless your character is just meant to be good at everything. A lot of the time, you'll have them where you know their sports is something that they can be bad at. Because also, when writing smart characters, they have to still have weaknesses. And we sort of see brains and brawn as like two separate, you know, sides and in competition with each other. The only time we're being super knowledgeable about sports. So, like, how football works is not seen as something that's particularly smart, unless you're in a sports manga. So, I mean, like, I haven't read much of Haikyuu, but I'm guessing characters that know all the, you know, strategies in volleyball are going to be seen smart in that series. Whereas in other series, they're not going to be. It's the same with this sort of fashion thing. Like, if it's a topic that's not typically valued as intelligent, if that's what your story centers around, then yes, that's going to be seen as an intelligent ca character. Now, also another thing is to make them successful, not all the time, but if you want them to come across as smart, they need to be successful in different, you know, scenarios because of their intelligence. Think of someone like Light Yagami, you know, he solves conflict via his intelligence, but a character like Izuku Midoriya from My Hero Academia is presented to us at the, smart, at the start as an intelligent character. You know, he's expecting to get into the hero school purely based on his grades before he gets his powers. I'm not counting that as a spoiler, this happens in like the first episode. Um, but every battle he does, he just punches his way through it. Like, he doesn't really use his intelligence and he doesn't particularly get stronger from it. I mean, the only time that I feel like he does is in the sports festival. Which is part of why I really like that, where he, you know, he manages to win that first competition without even using his superpower. You know, which is an interesting idea, because we've been told so far that, you know, you need a superpower to succeed as a hero, and he manages to do it purely based on wits. But then I, I mean, I'm not up to date in it, but it, based on, you know, the 300 chapters, odd chapters I have read, I'm, I feel like that idea just got forgotten. <laughs> So yes, you want your characters to actually be successful based on their intelligence. And just, if they lose all the time, they're not going to come across as particularly smart, because smart people succeed. Also, a quick way to make them seem smart is to just give them good grades, because, you know, a lot of stories take place in uh, um, school, so just having them, like, have a test and show off, look, I got, like, 100%. The only time I've seen that not particularly work is in My Hero Academia... Momo actually comes first in a lot of the academic stuff, but because she does badly in the sports festival, people seem to forget how smart she is, and also just because like, she doesn't get as much attention as some of the other characters. But yeah, like it's a, people see that you know you get good grades, you're smart, which I wouldn't like. I was the kind of person that people would assume were smart because I got good grades. But I would just know how to answer the questions and pass the content. Like, I mean, but I'm not going to argue about, like, whether or not this is true, that, you know, getting lots of good grades necessarily makes you intelligent, but, um, people see it that way, you know? They're like, you, you get the good grades, you pass the test. So, like, generally having an all-A character, like, a student that's getting all-A's will make them look smart. I'm not sure how you necessarily do that 
if you're not at school, I I mean, because in the average situation, there's not really grades and stuff. I mean, I know you could have them playing chess. Chess is another thing we associate with intelligence. I hate chess so much. I'm so bad at it. Everyone assumes I'm good at chess because they assume I'm smart and smart people can play chess. I know the rules, but I'm bad at it. I much prefer the game Mastermind, which if you haven't played, it's like a logic based game as well, but it doesn't change. I feel like my issue with chess is I'm just, I freak out or like not look at the whole board and stuff. Now I'm trying to think of what other stuff I've missed. Oh, okay. There's an elephant in the room to slightly address is the autistic coding. So um, I am autistic myself. And I, I'm just bringing this up because a lot of intelligent characters, you know, your geniuses, I mean, like, we'll, we'll write genius, because I guess we are going into, like, super big brain territory, um, tend to be autistic coded. So the biggest example I can think of is your likes of Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory. He's not canonically autistic, but it's pretty obvious that autistic people, like, he, he's autistic coded. Um... Which, I can understand why autistic coding is associated with genius characters, because I'm pretty sure Einstein... He wasn't diagnosed with autism because I don't think the diagnosis existed, but based on what we know about Einstein, he would have been diagnosed with um, autism. And I'm pretty sure the same with like Isaac Newton. Anyway, there are actual like, real-world geniuses that you know, are autistic, which sort of makes sense that autistic coding is kind of linked to it, but I do also just want to bring it up because, you know, you can, if you are unaware of it, you might um, venture into some harmful stereotypes and stuff because not every autistic person is a super genius. And I feel like that in media, it feels like it's getting better now. But I do feel like for a while, autistic people were either Rain Man from the film Rain Man, or they were Sheldon Cooper from Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Also, another thing, um, I guess this kind of links into autistic coding. A weakness given to smart characters is often, like, social awkwardness. Um. Yeah, I can't fit that in, but, um, social awkwardness, which I guess is kind of... Wait, I'm, I've got an idea, but I need to, like rub off my beautiful board. Uh, pro tip, if you're using a whiteboard, you can use hand sanitizer to make it easier to wipe stuff off. Um, you know, like sometimes when you just can't wipe it, this all probably would have come off without hand sanitizer because, you know, it's pretty fresh. But yeah, hand sanitizer can help get off stuff that just doesn't want to come off because it's been there too long. Look at my beautiful hand frame. Um, so we're gonna look at, you know, types of intelligence, I guess. I don't know if there's a formal thing. So we've got like, yeah, social and social, emotional. Because we are talking about intelligent characters, but there are certain intelligences. Uh, I guess like we'll go athleticism. I don't know if there's like a proper intelligence term. We've got like artist, artistic creativity is the word I want. And then I guess we'll go into like books. Oh, and then there's also street smarts, which I think vary slightly to social and emotional. I'm not very street smart, so I don't fully get it. But these are like, you know, different types of intelligence and stuff. So when you're writing a smart character, usually they're in this category. Uh, and they usually are lacking in some other category. Unless they're a character that's designed to be, you know, perfect in every kind of way. Um, but, so you will get some characters that are just good at, like, lots of things, so you've got, like, Light Yagami is, like, really athletic, he's, you know, popular, he's really smart, I don't know much about creativity, because I don't remember if there's any point where they do, I mean, I guess you could argue his cre creativity is kind of similar, by this I specifically mean, like, being artistic, because, uh, Creativity, I guess, can come into sort of coming up with cool plans, which you could argue Light's very good at that, but I'm more meaning your things like your Kappa, which is, uh, like, art, as in visual arts, like, making manga and stuff, um, music, um, theatre, those kind of things. That's specifically what I mean there. Uh, you've got, um, Kokomi. Wait. 
Komi. No, her name is Komi. I'm like, Kokomi's from Genshin. Komi from Komi Can't Communicate is also a really intelligent character. We just kind of forget it because they have, they're kind of similar to Sheldon Cooper in that they both have such a major deficit in their social, like, um, and like social skills that they're able to be OP in other areas. I mean, Sheldon's also bad at athletics, but like Komi is practically perfect in every way apart from, you know, having the social anxiety. But because the social anxiety is, I guess, that strong where they can barely talk to people, it, they don't end up feeling overpowered, especially because the story centers around Komi trying to get past this. Whereas if Komi was trying to, I don't know, get A's in all her tests, She's already basically there, so it wouldn't come across as, you know, a particularly interesting story. So if you're writing a smart character as your protagonist, or, you know, one of the good guys, then you probably need some sort of goal that, you know, their intelligence isn't necessarily going to automatically, you know, get them to win. So Light, you know, is super smart and uses intelligence directly, but then you've also got L. The bad guy is also smart. Okay, when I say bad guy, I mean antagonist, because L's not a bad guy, he's in a villain. Um, one could argue that if anyone's a villain, it's light. But I'm not going to open up the can of worms of who should have won, because people have strong opinions on that. I mean, looking at someone like Sheldon Cooper, uh, they, they don't really have an overarching sort of thing. I mean, they're also the secondary character. Like, you could argue the main story is, like, about Leonard trying to get with Penny, but it's a sitcom where, like, sitcoms don't fall, like, in episodic stories, like your Psyche K's and a manga example that I can think of, don't necessarily have to worry as much about what the plot is about because that's not where the entertainment factor is coming from. Now, villains don't necessarily need to have the same sort of degree of weaknesses and stuff because... You know, they're meant to be a threat, so if you've got your evil genius character, they need, you know, they don't necessarily need to be as bad at other things because having an OP villain isn't necessarily a super bad thing. Um, I mean, you can make it more interesting by having them have flaws and not be 100% overpowered, and also they can't be 100% overpowered because if you've got your dumb protagonist, so... We're gonna draw the dumb protagonist. If they're fighting against, you know, a super genius big brain, we'll give them a big brain. Then they need to, you know, they can't be too smart that, you know, this person would always lose under no circumstance, I guess, unless you give them, like, laser vision and super... Wait, I've got red. But you know what I mean? You can't have this person be so smart that your protagonist is just gonna lose. And it feels like a case of, you know, plot armor or deus ex machina if they end up winning. So, I feel like this is mostly what I wanted to talk about. I guess I'll recap some points. So, just... So, you're writing an intelligent character. They just need to be slightly smarter than the main... Than intelligent character slightly smarter than you know the average audience so if they're super good and know lots about cars go onto wikipedia spend a little bit of time looking at cars and just do a little bit of research or you could find a friend or someone who knows a lot about cars now you're probably like oh but i don't want to do lots of research and stuff which makes sense but even just doing like reading one article about an obscure topic or just something or like I don't know literature is something else. Like classical literature is something that you know we associate with being intelligent. So just go into Spark Notes, um, for you know, uh, Shakespeare because go to Spark Notes for Hamlet, and just have your character quote ha quote Hamlet or something, and bam, they're smart because Shakespeare's smart. Spark Notes is like a website that helps, that you know gives you summaries of chapters gives you quotes and stuff this is where we all cheat in english class um mm, yeah so just doing the tiniest bit of research will help you know just to get things and wikipedia is helpful for a beginning opening place and there's also references you can go to i know teachers are like don't use wikipedia i stand wikipedia 
I mean, I don't, I never used it in assessment tasks. I would avoid it like the plague because I knew that teachers hated seeing it in your bibliography. But now that I am an adult and not at school, like at the moment, for stuff that's not related to school, Wikipedia is your friend. Wikipedia. Also, um, spelling. Characters being able to spell makes them look smart. Um, yeah, so just having a character that's, you know, articulate seems classy, I guess. There's, there, there is classism in what we see as intelligent. Like, that's part of, I think, why Sheldon, despite me, I know that I keep coming back to Sheldon Cooper, but he's like basically the blueprint for how a you write someone that people will think is smart without actually necessarily making a smart character or being smart yourself. Sheldon comes from Texas, yet does not have a Texan accent. In the show Young Sheldon, Sheldon is the only character without a Texan accent. And I feel like this, like there is an explanation in canon, but th they chose to make a character from a place with a specific accent and not give him that accent for basically no reason. Probably to because we, I don't know, maybe we associate Texan accents with not sounding smart, which sounds messed up, but no, we're not here to get into the questions and stuff. But yeah, that's something else to maybe keep in mind that if they sound like that they're, you know, big and fancy and rich, they probably will come across as that if they're more intelligent, probably, you know, compared to if they sound like they're. I know what I'm trying to say, but it's not coming out very well because I'm realizing how messed up it is that we associate, you know, if you sound like that you're rich and sophisticated and stuff, you're going to sound like you're sm less smarter than someone who sounds poor. Um, because, you know, money doesn't equate to intelligence, but we still associate, you know, the bourgeoisie. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, a smart guy or girl or person of any gender because you know gender does not equal in smarts they have glasses because you know glasses make you smart um they're angry at life they're quite cynical you know probably quite sarcastic and just no one gets how deep and dark they, they are you know all these people around them are just so stupid also yeah a lot of um their hubris is probably their hamata so hamata is their fatal flaw they're probably super arrogant that seems to be pretty common because if the character's like self-doubting, that can, like if they express doubt in their intelligence, that can maybe hinder and make them seem less intelligent because then the audience may also doubt. So you just want to have them act like they're just the smartest thing. You want the story to just act like that, unless you're specifically trying to challenge it. Or maybe later on in the story, they can have an arc where they realize maybe they're not as smart as they thought they were, but that's okay. Yeah, there's a lot we can do. So I think that's where I'm going to wrap up because my voice is hurting and I've been trying to avoid coughing this entire time. Uh, so thanks for watching uh, and I should be including bloopers because I did try to make this video like a week or so ago but I was super sick. But I'm kind of glad because I didn't have the idea of the whiteboard yet so it was just me sitting on the couch talking but I like this whiteboard. I feel like it suits the theme of you know make it makes it look like we're in a classroom situation. But yeah, I lasted like less than two minutes before I started coughing to the point where I couldn't talk. So I had to delay the video. But yes, thanks for watching, especially all this way. If you have any video topics you want me to go through, because I am trying to um, make more videos. Um, so yeah, video topics, if you agree or disagree with anything. If there's anything you feel like I've really missed, or if you've got a favorite intelligent character that maybe breaks the mold, or like explaining why you think that they work as intelligent just comment anything it all helps um uh, like and subscribe if you want to if you don't want to you can dislike the video too if you think it's just garbage do that um i won't be offended i mean I, i'm i'm not even sure if i see the dislikes no i would um anyway <laughs> thanks for watching and uh see you guys i have a confession i'm an idiot and proof of this is the fact that I am making this video whilst very sick. Like, I have my throat is killing me, but this has been on my mind a lot. So most stories, you know, you want a character that's intelligent. You want a smart character, but 
You might be thinking, well, how can I write that if I'm an idiot? Well, this video's premise is basically sim um, based on the concept that you can, like, you can write a smart character as an idiot if you just make your character appear slightly smarter than the audience. So, the average person, right, assumes that they are smart. So your character just needs to know a little bit above average for people to think that they're some sort of genius. So I've heard this a lot. I've just, I've realized that, you know, you don't need to be particularly well versed in a topic for people to think that you're super smart about it just because they assume that they're a smart person. So if you're if you appear slightly smarter than them, they're like, oh well you must you must be smart. Um so for example, I had this once where, you know, I was talking to a friend to do with insects and like, you know, they were explaining different things because they're studying entomology, so naturally they actually know a fair bit about bugs. Um, entomology is the study of <coughs> <coughs> see? Stupid. They're doing this. <coughs> Yeah, okay, now I'm starting to regret this, but basically we're discussing things, and this old lady commented... Okay, this is 100% getting postponed. Jeez. 